Dividend stocks, dividend investing, or dividend ETFs. If you're a do-it-yourself investor, it's almost guaranteed that you heard any one of these terms, right? Which are basically all referencing uh, dividend investing or the dividend growth style of investing. So what exactly is this style of investing all about? Hey everyone, my name is Adrian and welcome to the third and final installment of an educational video series sponsored by BMO, one of Canada's largest banks and ETF providers. So in the first video I did, I reviewed the uh, covered call ETF. Uh, which are great for income-oriented investors like myself. The second video, I covered passive index ETFs, which are really designed for growth and total return uh, investors. And I'll put those links in the video description below in case you missed those two videos. But in today's video, we will review dividend ETFs. But what actually are dividends? What are dividend stocks? And finally, what are dividend ETFs and how do they work exactly? So these are the topics we will explore in this video together. And just like in the previous two videos, I will go over some examples, which is always the best way to learn, in my opinion. We'll go over some examples of dividend ETFs that are managed by BMO, and we'll finish off the video by reviewing the advantages uh, of investing in dividend ETFs. Let's get started. All right, everyone, so real quick, how, what is a dividend? How do dividends work? Well, if we go on Investopedia, trust the Investopedia, and we look up the definition real quick here, guys, a dividend is the distribution of a company's earnings to its shareholders and is determined by the company's board of directors. Dividends are often distributed quarterly, so every three months, and may be paid out in cash or in the form of reinvestment in additional stock. That talking about the dividend reinvestment plan where you have the choice to either get the dividends in cash or to reinvest them in the same company. So that's basically what it is, guys. I kind of like this definition better here below. The distribution of corporate profits to qualified shareholders as determined by the company's board of directors. So dividends, in, in short, everyone, are a portion of a company's profits. They are generated, therefore, uh, logically by typically big, profitable companies, companies like BMO, for example, or any one of the six banks in Canada. So these would be considered dividend stocks. And because they typically grow their profits uh, over time, they over time, they also grow their dividends over time. And that's where that expression dividend growth companies or dividend growth stocks come in. So it's not only profitable, profitable companies, but companies that tend to grow their dividends over time. So that that's very important to remember. So typically big, profitable companies, everyone, very, very reliable. And now what we will do is we will review uh, three of BMO's dividend ETFs. They have three of them. So uh, logically, you know, dividend ETFs are basically ETFs that hold many dividend stocks. It's as simple as that, everyone. So BMO has three of them, which we're going to review in detail in a little while here. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this slide because this is taken from their recent episode where they actually discuss everything that has to do with dividends, dividends, dividend growth, how, you know, what kind of companies are these and how they actually choose the stocks that go into these ETFs, because these are actively managed ETFs. And the big advantage is you don't have to pick and choose individual dividend stocks. You know what I mean? Which ones do I, do I invest in? Well, you could just invest in a dividend ETF um, to, to save a lot of time. So BMO is actually uh, choosing them for you. So they have three. We will review them in a second. So in case you missed this episode, by the way, they have a really good Facebook, uh, sorry, a really good YouTube channel called ETF Market Insights. And one of their recent episodes was on dividends. So this is the dividend episode here that came out on December 2nd. So if you're interested in any one of these ETFs, they go over it in detail. So I'll put the link to the video description below. But now if we get back to the slides here, um, I just want to point out that picking you know dividend stocks to go into their ETFs they take it very seriously and they don't just put any random dividend company in there right so you could see a couple of points here uh, security selection so stock selection begins with large cap equity so they're saying that we're going to go for the big cap the big companies here securities selected have a value and quality bias so it tend to be larger cap liquid stocks so we're going to put the big stocks in here uh, with a positive three-year dividend growth rate. So what they're saying here is they actually look 
at the history of the company to make sure that the dividend is sustainable, uh, which is very important, right? And, and what makes the dividend or the profit sustainable? Well, that means the company has to be in good shape and consistently generating profits and growing their profits over time. So this is, uh, you know, one slide taken from that episode. I strongly suggest you take it out, you, you check it out. But BMO has three dividend ETFs. ZDV, which focuses on the Canadian stock market, uh, ZUD, uh, ZDY, and ZDY.U, which focuses on the U.S. stock market, and they even have one which focuses on the international market, which is companies outside of North America. So basically, with these three ETFs, they're really good to hold all three together because you'll have you know some of the best dividend stocks in Canada, in the U.S., and outside of North America. So basically, all around the world, very very convenient. And for the uh, U.S. and international one, they have hedged uh, versions and unhedged versions. So whenever you see an ETF is hedged back to the Canadian dollar, like ZUD, ZDH, it means that any currency fluctuation between the Canadian dollar, the U.S. dollar, or in case of the international one, um, the Canadian dollar and the euro, for example, is mitigated. So the... Uh, in case the Canadian dollar gets weaker or stronger against these currencies, it will not impact the ETF. However, if you get the unhedged ones, uh, like ZDY, for example, it means that in case the Canadian dollar gets weaker vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the, the U.S. dollar, it would actually help the unhedged version, right? If the, because, uh, you know, U.S. dollar gets more powerful since these are uh, dividend, U.S. dividend stocks. Uh, it, it, it's actually better for the ETF. So, uh, which one to choose is really up to you. Basically, if you really, if you believe more that the Canadian dollar will get weaker or or the American dollar will get stronger vis-a-vis -vis the Canadian dollar, you would probably go with the unhedged one. If you don't, you know, you're agnostic to it. You don't want to think about or deal with any, or you don't want currency uh, to impact the performance of your ETF or your 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 securities then you would go with the hedged version as simple as that so now let's check out everyone these three etfs in detail let's see exactly how they work what kind of stocks are in them what kind of yield you're going to get the management fee the performance everything and by the end of the video you will be an expert with these three uh, etfs so let's check them out together all right let's start with zdv or zdv uh, the BMO Canadian Dividend ETF. So very popular uh, dividend ETF in Canada. So like the name says, you're, you're going to have the Canadian dividend stocks in here. So let, let's go through it one by one and hopefully we'll learn and, and, and see how these dividend ETFs work. So you have the stock symbol, of course. This is all, they're all, all three of them are going to be listed on the uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, by the way. So they're all in Canadian dollars. And you see that the management expense ratio is 0.39%, which simply means that for every $1,000 you invest, you will have to you know, pay a $3.90 fee for every $1,000 you invest. Worth every penny, if you ask me, it's very, very, very low. And this, of course, you know, in case you're new to investing, it's not something you will see come out of your account or anything like that. It's just integrated or it's included in the fund. So this particular ETF has a really nice yield or a high uh, annual distribution yield of 4.42%. So think of this like the annual interest rate. It's just the easiest way to, to uh, think about it. And I'll show you how that gets calculated in a second here uh, in, in case you're curious because that's a pretty um, important component of dividend stocks and dividend ETFs. And another thing is that these ETFs are drip eligible, right? So in case you don't want to get the dividend in cash or you just want to, to reinvest that dividend automatically, so these ETFs are all drip eligible as well. So if we scroll down, we'll see the benefits of this ETF designed for investors looking for income and growth solutions. So this is a, you know, it's an income solution because there are dividend stocks, but also growth um, because there, there's no covered calls on this or anything. So you will get that organic growth of these stocks as well and the growth of the dividends. Exposure to higher dividend paying Canadian equities or Canadian stocks, sustainable income with lower volatility than the market. So dividend companies uh, tend to have lower volatility or be a bit more defensive and resilient uh, than the overall stock market simply because these are big, bigger companies that are very profitable. 
And here's a key thing here, sustainable income. So it's very important to remember that BMO is doing the research and making sure that these dividend stocks have sustainable dividends. So there's no yield traps or dividend yield traps here. You hear that expression often. Uh, this just means a yield trap is basically a company who has a high dividend but uh, their, their profits are not really covering it. So they're unable to sustain it, it's unsustainable. So all the stocks inside these ETFs do, you know, they're not yield traps at all. It's very important to remember that. And that goes with the advantage of active management, professional management by BMO Global Asset Management. So there you have it. Let's check out this uh, ETF in detail. Of course, the first thing you always wanna see is what's actually inside the fund, right? This is an ETF. But what's inside ZDB or what are the stocks inside? So if we scroll down, if you look at the holdings, let's look at the top 10 holdings here. You can see the top 10 companies and it should be all uh, Canadian companies that you will recognize, right? Enbridge is number one at 5%. You have TD Bank, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, Scotia Bank, uh, Bell Cannon, the Canadian Natural Resources, the biggest uh, oil and gas producer in Canada. Uh, CIBC Bank, TC Energy Corp, which is a big pipeline company, pipeline company number two after Enbridge, Manulife, and of course, Bank of Montreal. So it's really the big, big, boring, <laughs> profitable companies, blue chip companies. If you click on all, all holdings, you will actually see all the, all the stocks. We're talking about up 50, about 50 dividend stocks, everyone. So you see that here, number of holdings, 52 uh, dividend stocks in, in, in total, or actually maybe one or two could be like cash or something. So it's about 50. It's about 50. And if we scroll down to the sector allocation, of course, they're all in Canada, right, in terms of region, because these are all Canadian stocks. But you could see here, it's your typical Canadian breakdown. The biggest chunk is always going to be financials and energy is always a big uh, chunk as well. So you'll have financial companies, energy companies, communication services companies, that, that would be stuff like Bell, Telus Rogers, utilities, that would be like pipeline companies and electricity companies like Ford, Samara, materials, so things like, you know, gold producers like Barrick, stuff like that, industrials, consumer staples, consumer discretionary. So, you know, automatic diversification and overall representation, you know, of the Canadian market here. So really, really good blue chip, reliable stocks, everyone. And if we look at the, the dividends now, so the distribution history, if we look at 2022, uh, all the distributions have been declared for 2022. So one advantage of these ETFs is they have monthly dividends, monthly you know distributions. And here you could see the amount, the cash distribution per unit. So it means for every share that you have, if you have one share of this ETF, every month you're gonna get six and a half cents. You know, in January you would have got six and a half cents in February. And they even increase the dividend here from six and a half cents to seven cents. So this is always good to see. You always want to see a little bit of growth once in a while for a ETF that holds dividend stocks, which means that the dividend stocks within the ETF are growing their dividends over time. So right now it's, it's solid at seven cents a month. This is the last distribution here. Another thing you could check is how are these distributions or how are these dividends being taxed? Well, if you scroll down to the tax, we don't have the 2022 information yet because uh, that's usually available a couple of, in a couple of months. But we could look at the breakdown for 2021, which will, should give us an idea. So because they're mostly Canadian companies, you know, uh, you're going to expect the, the biggest chunk will be eligible dividends or classified as eligible dividends, which is pretty tax efficient in Canada. You also have a little bit of return of capital here. So total uh, dividend per unit or per share was 78 cents in 2021. So 57 cents out of that 78 cents is considered eligible dividend and the rest is considered return of capital. Now there's a lot of negative connotation around return of capital. A lot of people think, well, it's just your money being returned to you. Well, that could be true, but it not it's not always the case. Return of capital is simply a tax classification. I have a few videos where I discuss this. I don't, I'm not gonna get it in detail now, but return of capital essentially is not tax. So. Obviously, if you have this in your TFSA or RSP, none of this makes a difference, but this is really a consideration if you have it in your cash account or a non-registered account. So how is the yield, you know, we looked at it before, seven cents a month. So how do they come up with uh, this number here? 
4.42% uh, annual yield, or this is your basically what they're trying to say is your, your interest rate as of December 16th. Well, it's pretty easy to calculate. I'll show you real quick. What you need to calculate the yield or the annual int uh, interest rate is the, the dividend rate, the annual dividend rate. So we saw it was seven cents, right? So seven cents, you gotta do times 12 because you want the annual dividend rate, not the monthly one. And then you just divide it by the current stock price. Uh, if we see this one, so there, you know, this is on, based on the 16, this is based on the 21. So it's probably not gonna be perfect, but it should be close to 4.42. So you just do 0.84 divided by 19.17 times 100, guys, that's the formula. And you see that the yield uh, is 4.38. So it's, it, it's very close to 4.42. The reason why it doesn't match is because uh, the closing price, the, the dates are different here, but that is basically how you calculate everyone, your, your annual uh, dividend rate, uh, sorry, not the annual dividend rate, your distribution yield, your annual yield. So this is ZDV, uh, which will take care of your Canadian exposure, your Canadian stocks. The next one I want to look at is ZDY. So this is the U, the BMO US dividend ETF. So like the name says, uh, you know, you're going to have mostly U.S. companies in here or all U.S. companies rather. And management fees, 0.33, so $3.30 for every $1,000 you invest. A little bit lower than the Canadian one. Uh, the yield is a little bit lower as well, which is normal because in the U.S. They, they typically have less concentration or less dividend yields than in Canada because there's a lot of tech companies like Google and Amazon, for example, that don't provide dividends. So those companies are not in here. So if you scroll down, uh, you know, this is the unhedged version one. Uh, let's, let's see what kind of stocks are in here. So that's, that's the first thing I always want to check. So the top 10 holdings, once again, most probably companies you're going to recognize everyone, Procter and, Gam uh, and, and Gamble, uh, which is, you know, they make Gillette and all kinds of consumer staples or consumer essentials. You have Pfizer and AbV, Johnson & Johnson, uh, big, big healthcare companies, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Verizon, JP Morgan and Chase, Merck, another healthcare company. So really big, boring companies, guys. I mean, let's face it, dividend, big blue chip dividend stocks are typically big, well-established profit powerhouses. If we look at the sector allocation, we will have more of a uh, sector allocation typical to the U.S. market. So a lot of healthcare and tech. When you think U.S., it's mostly healthcare and tech. Canada, it's mostly financials and energy. So a big chunk in healthcare and information technology, but you also have consumer staples and financials, utilities, industrials, a little bit of everything here. Of course, it's all in the United States. All companies are in the United States. A little bit more than Canada, though, because there's about 100 dividend companies in here because there's simply, simply a bigger market, right? The U.S. market is absolutely huge. And uh, the dividend here is, you know, it's been in 2022, eight cents, eight cents a month, the whole, the, the whole year, uh, very, very consistent. And if we look at the tax breakdown, however, you're not going to have any eligible dividend, right? Because these are U.S. companies. So you're going to have the majority in foreign income, a uh, little bit of return of capital as well. So once again, everyone, if it's in a TFSA or RSP account, this doesn't really matter, but in a cash account or in a non-registered, you will have to, you know, it's not taxed as well as eligible dividends. Another question you might have is, is there any additional withholding tax uh, to pay? Uh, the answer is no, because that's all handled within the ETF. You actually see here that BMO is already paying the withholding tax. So because this is a Canadian listed product, right? The ZDY is a Canadian ETF that holds American stocks, but it's it's listed as Canadian, you don't have to worry about any withholding taxes or additional withholding taxes. It's it's handled by uh, BMO. Third and last one is ZDI or ZDI, the International Dividend ETF. So the first one was Canada. This one is the US and this is gonna be outside of North America. So we're talking about Europe, Japan, Australia. We'll, we'll, let's, let's take a look at it here. Really nice uh, distribution yield as well. Management fee a little bit higher, so $4 and 40 cents for every thousand dollars you invest. Let's take a look at the companies. You might recognize a lot of them. I do, but I don't recognize all of them, to be honest with you, because these are more uh, international companies. So you have Total Energies, which is a big energy producer in France. Uh, Rio Tinto, which is materials, more materials. Nestle, you'll probably recognize. That's Consumer Staples, Novartis, which is healthcare, Rush, healthcare, uh, consumer, there's Toyota. Here's Louis Vuitton, which is a consumer stock. Sanofi Unilever, which is kind of like, I like to think of it as the Procter & Gamble of, of the uh, Europe consumer staple. So these are all 
companies that are in, you know, outside of North America. So if you scroll down, you can actually see the geographic allocation. So 17% in Japan, you have France, Germany, UK, uh, even a bit in the US here. So might be asking, why is there US companies? Well, this is probably international companies that have maybe their headquarters in the US. I'm not sure. Um, Switzerland, Australia, Hong Kong. So it's, it's pretty much outside of North America. Once again, sector diversified everyone, financials, healthcare, industrials, et cetera, et cetera. So instant diversification, uh, about 100 dividend stocks here, everyone. Yield is really, really nice at 4%. Sorry, I'm, I keep scrolling up and down. And once again, monthly uh, distributions uh, as well, right? So um, yeah, monthly distribution, six and a half cents. You see a dividend increase in July, which is always good to see at seven cents. And of course, most of it's gonna be foreign income again, because these are, uh, you know, they're not Canadian companies. So, and you'll have a little bit of return of capital. In terms of performance, if we, we wanna look at the performance, performance, pretty good with, with in Canada. So in the last 10 years, your annual, your average annually is over 7% return really, really good in Canada. In the US, I'm expecting it a lot more because the US has been on fire uh, and typically performs a bit better than Canada. So you don't have the 10 year one because it hasn't been 10 years uh, from this ETF, but you see the last five years is 8% since inception or since it was created 13, last two years, 14%. So really nice annual uh, performance here. Let's check the, uh, the international one a little bit lower, I believe, for this one. Last five years, only 2%. Yeah, 2.29%. So all in all, guys, this, these are the three main uh, dividend ETFs that BMO manages. So once again, ZDI for international exposure, ZDY for US, and ZDV for the Canadian exposure. All right, so let's go over the advantages, the pros of dividend stocks and more specifically dividend ETFs. So advantage number one is you're pretty much gonna be invested or investing in quality blue chip stocks, right? So these are big profitable companies uh, they tend to have lower risk, lower volatility than the overall stock market. Uh, so it's not like you're going to be investing in small cap companies uh, that are not profitable yet or startups or anything like that. We're only talking about the big boys. So very, very a defensive you know, strategy when it comes to investing in stocks overall. Advantage number two, and this is specifically for dividend ETFs and ETFs in general, is you have instant diversification, right? Just like we saw in those three ETFs. You'll have exposure to multiple companies in multiple sectors. So you have instant diversification. And not only that, but if you get all three of them, you'll have regional diversification as well. So instant uh, sector diversification and regional diversification if you purchase uh, you know, dividend ETFs that cover multiple regions. Another one is passive income, right? Uh, every month you're gonna be getting uh, income. You're going to be getting dividends. So one advantage of the the BMO ETFs is that uh, you will get the income on a monthly basis, whereas typically a dividend stocks, if you just purchase the individual companies, they give it out on a quarterly basis or every three months. So very very convenient to get a, a consistent stream of income, especially if you want a little bit of extra income uh, to supplement your other streams of income. And last but definitely not least, this is my personal favorite, there's no stock picking required, right? So like we discussed at the beginning, it's not like you don't have to choose, you pick and choose your individual dividend stocks, although there's nothing wrong with that, but could, it could be very time consuming and it's actually pretty difficult you, to analyze and determine which companies you know, have the good dividend growth rates over time. So these ETFs are professionally managed by BMO, very, very big and responsible company that are doing the research for you. They have analysts, they have all their team, a big team doing all this research. So, uh, you know, they and they have strict guidelines of which companies or which dividend stocks they choose to be part of the ETF. So you're getting that advantage with active management. Yes, you're paying a management fee, but as we saw, it's not that expensive. It's not even, it's less than half a percent, right? So in my opinion, it's worth it just so you save the most valuable commodity uh, in the world, which is time. So that's another advantage. So there you have it, everyone. Hopefully that gives you a good introduction of what dividend stocks and, and what dividend ETFs are and how they work. Of course, you could do a lot more research uh, on dividend ETFs. You could check out and do your own research on the three that I covered. And I'll put the links uh, to those three ETFs uh, below so you could check them out. So 
hopefully you, you, you understand and you, you have a good sense of how these dividend ETFs work and the advantages that they could bring to your personal portfolio.